All right, that's slightly better, a little bit, a little bit higher. So we are now on the next team. So we've done a few teams now. So this is a team. I don't. I will say I think this team is a playoff team, but it's not really my cup of tea. Um, I will say in the past, uh, the way this team has drafted has probably not never been my cup of tea. Uh, but I do think this team is a playoff team. Uh, but I don't really love their draft. So I guess we will just uh, go right on into it. Uh, so this team I'm doing is uh, Brian's team. So you have changed your name as well. So your team is Akaloda Touchdowns. Not really sure what that play on words is for, but hey, whatever floats your boat. So we'll just get into it. We'll go. We'll start from there. So first pick, 11th pick, Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake looked really good last year um he's been stuck in miami for a while and he finally got his opportunity he was traded to arizona and you know he was kind of he was all right basically once he got traded there but in the last three weeks he just exploded once he was getting like 20 touches a game he was putting up monster numbers so the hope is he kind of keeps that up. Usually, again, it's kind of like the um, same thing I just had with Patrick, where it's just like Joe Mixon just exploded in the second half of the season. Or, you know, Miles Sanders, uh, who we'll get to in Justin's video, and I had him explode in the second half of the season. Um, so Kenny and Drake explode in the second half of the season. Now, do I like Kenny and Drake? I do. I do quite a bit like Kenyon Drake. I think he is the starter in Arizona. He took over and he handled 66% of the uh, team's carries once he started, once he was traded there. Um, he had the fourth, the fourth most fantasy points uh, in the last eight weeks of the season. Now, granted, that a lot of that has to do with the last three weeks of the season where he was really getting heavily worked. Um, so... He's very much in the RB1 discussion. I like the upside. Personally, I actually think it's a very high-risk pick uh, just because, like, you're hoping... You're buying him at his peak, which was the last, the last like, three weeks of the season, the last half of the season in Arizona. Now, it could be real, uh, but I'm still surprised at basically the risk just because... You know, I mean, maybe not Michael Thomas, because I don't believe in taking wide receivers in the first round, but Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, you know, maybe Mixon. I think those three running backs behind him were safer. But I like taking the upside. I like swinging for the fences. I had him for part of last year. Uh, he definitely would have helped my fantasy team. And, I mean, he looked really good in Arizona. I'm interested to see how much they use him. I'm betting on the pass-heavy part. That's why I took Hopkins, personally. But, I mean, Drake's probably going to get at least 15 touches a game. And so, if he looks anything like he did in the last half of the season, that's a very solid first-round pick. Honestly, I'm probably going to say that for most teams. Like, the first-round pick, a lot of you guys just went by the book and just, like, running back, highest guy on the board. Some of you took upside. Some of you took, like, safety. But, like, I really can't argue with most of these picks. So, I... I don't love the pick, but I like the pick, and he looked really, really good in Arizona, and if I was in the back half, I mean, I'd probably take Jones or Chubb or Mixon, but I don't mind taking Drake. Uh, he just has to continue what he showed in the second half. Um, where we kind of go away from what I like <laughs> it starts in the uh, next pick, so you had the fourth overall pick in the second round so that's about the 18th pick and we took Chris Carson um so I will just get this out of the way uh you have patterns Brian me going back through like the draft recaps and going to see your teams the patterns are pretty usually pretty easy to spot like you really like LA or west coast t players uh specifically like west coast wide receivers like you know the Mike Williams uh, Brandon Cooks, Amari Cooper when he was in Oakland. You took Jordy Nelson when he was in Oakland. You took Robert Woods last year. You know, 
you strangely avoided Keno, and I'm still mystified by that. You know Mike Williams, though, so you really like West Coast receivers a lot, specifically L.A., and you also really like the Seattle running game. Like, you took Rashad Penny when he's a rookie. Now you've taken Carson, like, a couple years in a row. I mean, I would say the reason why I don't like Chris Carson is, like, you know exactly what he is. So he's, like, I guess you're going for more consistency since you just took Drake. So I can kind of understand that. Um, and, like, you know, Carson's a consistent running back. He'll probably be, like, another fine top 15 running back he's been a top 15 running back for three years in a row uh but it's kind of i don't know just for me like they brought in carlos hyde penny's still there i mean if they really believed in carson they wouldn't be doing all of this like penny wouldn't have been a first round pick carlos hyde wouldn't be signed off free agency i know seattle likes to run the ball for reasons unknown personally i mean they have russell wilson and Russell Wilson's fantastic, and I know that, you know, Carson's the guy at the goal line, but I still I still hate his fumbling issues. It's still a problem. I still hate the games where he gets benched because of said fumbling issues. Those are a problem. Um, he gets, he is like a volume monster, so he'll get a lot of like 20 carry games more so than like a lot of other teams because this is the, strangely enough, Percentage-wise, this is the most run-heavy offense in the NFL, so I guess I understand why we take him every year. But he's really, for me, he's just terribly unexciting. Um, and I know that's not really, like, the best thing to say, but it's just, like, he's never going to be a top-10 running back. Like, it's just, it'll never happen. He'll never, like, it's kind of like last year when Sarah took Aaron Jones or, like, um when... Andre won his championship, ch championship, and won and took a uh, Todd Gurley. Like you, typically, I want to take again. I want to go for more high upside. I want to go for a guy who can really push and have a great year. Like last year, I took Miles Sanders, and he had a great finishing of the year. You just took Kenyon Drake. Like usually, another thing that I've noticed with you, and we'll get into this more as the draft goes on. You usually buy guys at like their peak value. And that's something, like, I personally, I just don't like. I don't agree with that idea. I don't like doing that at all. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, the reason why I don't love the Kenyon Drake pick is because, like, I've seen it for half a season. I think there's upside. But the thing is, even if we assume he's going to be better in Arizona, I'm paying exactly, like, market value of what, essentially, he is. Like, the upside is already baked into the draft where he where the draft position is so he he's basically almost like borderline top 10 running back and that's what i'm paying for him and while we might say it's like there is upside and i do like the Kenyon drake pick this is the same kind of thing with carson only even more so like we're paying exactly what the value is for him like this is the peak and i don't like paying for that because like it means there's no there's no more ceiling to go any higher carson is not going to get better the only way to go is down. Now, Drake Drake is another thing I think you're paying for him at his peak, but there's the possibility of him getting better. But too many times in your draft, I feel like you're paying for a guy thinking he might be better, and I'm just like, I think this is his peak. Like, this guy's not going to get better. And I feel exactly that way about Carson. Like, will Carson be a top 15 running back? Yeah, he'll be in, like, the 10 to 15 range. Um possibly because like that's what he's consistently been but it's very clear that seattle is not happy about that it's also it wouldn't be surprising to me if he did suffer an injury um just because again it's hard with running backs a lot of them do get injured so i don't wish that upon him but between his fumbling issues uh, the fact that there's not a lot of upside here of him challenging for a top 10 running back position and because i mean he, you're basically drafting him where you're hoping he finishes the season, and I don't like that. I don't like, I don't know, I want more upside with my second round pick. I want someone who's elite, and I never feel like Carson's ever going to be that. Like, I think he's a good running back, um, but it's just ter it's just tremendously unexciting uh, because he's never, like, there are guys behind him that 
you could have taken instead, who were not as safe, obviously, Carson's super safe, because you know exactly what you're getting for him, but I'd rather take a swing and miss um, and try and figure it out than just get, like, someone safe who's just going to, like, I don't know. The reason why I say you're a playoff team is because you consistently take these safe guys, and, like, it's good enough to get you in the playoffs, but, like, there's a reason you've come in seventh every single year now since, like, you came, you finished, like, runner-up. I mean, that's a long time ago, and now we're seventh place, seventh place, seventh place, seventh, just over and over and over. I, and I just feel like it's because there's just not enough upside. Again, so, do I think you're a playoff team? Yeah, but I don't, this is why I don't like your draft. So, third round pick, I mean, this is just, this is what I'm talking about. This is a classic, like, Brian pick. Like, I knew you would take him, even going, even before we got to the third round, after you took Carson, I'm like, oh, this is a classic Brian pick. Like you love your ro older running backs. I really, I don't understand it. That's like another thing that I noticed. That was a little bit mystifying to me. But you love older running backs like Frank Gore. You've taken Jordan Howard now two years in a row. Um, you know, you were like, a, you took Isaiah Crowell back in the day. So it's just like older running backs, older plotting running backs for you. Uh, especially, I guess another thing is like you like plotters. Like you took Sonny Michelle last year, coming off him leading the NFL in touchdowns. It's another thing we can get into. Touchdown regression is real. If someone leads the league in touchdowns for a season, he's not going to lead the league in touchdowns the next season. That's just it's too random. And that's why I mean, like when you're paying like market value for a guy, you're buying. All of the upside's already baked into where you're picking him, so there's no more there's no more going up. He's as high as he can get, and I don't like paying like value like that, and that's what I I feel like you do that too much. Um personally, do I like Jordan Howard? I do actually like him going into this year with the Dolphins. Um I think Jordan Howard is going to get a lot of play. Uh he is the number one running back. In Miami, Miami has the easiest rushing schedule, according to Pro Football Focus, going into this season. So I really like that. I really like that he's the goal line back. I really like that, you know, he's paired with Matt Breida, and Matt Breida gets hurt all the time. Um, but the reason why I probably would have taken Breida later on instead of Jordan Howard is because, like, we're paying Jordan Howard right now in, like, the third round, and Breida... I mean, Brita, because he gets hurt all the time, was a much later draft pick. I don't exactly know where. I'd have to like go back and look, see if I can find him, and just cycle through it. So round seven, round eight. Man, Brita really went deep. Anyway, we can get to that later. The reason why I like Brita more as an upside pick, though, is just because like if he happens to stay healthy, like he's a home run hitter. He looked great in San Francisco last year. And Howard is just not, like, he, this is the third team that in three seasons that's essentially like, eh, we like you, but we don't really love you. I think, you know, he's super duper consistent. I mean, he's racked up close to 4,000 yards now in four seasons, um, and he only trails Elliott and Gurley. Yeah, 3,895 yards in four seasons. So in those four seasons, he only trails Elliott and Todd Gurley, in rushing yards and he's pretty effective but he's not a great pass catcher and he was a top 20 running back his first three years but do i think he's a top 20 running back going into this year eh, that's a give and take i mean i hope he gets like 200 carries but i don't know especially because like they're going into a chan gailey offense which is a very high flying offense just like Ryan Fitzpatrick from like three years ago when the Jets almost made the playoffs. So like, you know, he's not, he's big, he's strong, but he's not fast. He's been around the league. This is year five. You, you know what you're getting with him. And it's just like, you know, again, it's a, like a classic Brian pick because like even if Jordan Howard happens to go for like 1,100 yards and like six touchdowns, we're drafting him in the third round already. So like, we're paying peak value for a guy where I'm really just like, is the upside there? Like, is there any real, like, can he go any higher from here? And I just feel like the answer is no. Like, imagine, like, the very next pick is, like, Kareem Hunt. 
Imagine if Nick Chubb gets hurt in, like, week one. Kareem Hunt's, like, a top five running back the rest of the year. Like, I, I mean, Howard's just kind of going to be there. And I know, you know, you don't know all the possibilities. I don't know all the possibilities. But, I don't know, I feel like swinging for the fences every once in a while isn't a bad thing instead of constantly hitting, like, we talked about, like, Alex and Hannah hitting doubles. I like those. I feel like you're hitting singles. And, you know, I, I, you'll score eventually. That's why you'll make the playoffs. But you're not, you're not going to get very far. So, I don't know. I just knew, like, Jordan Howard being on the board, this was, you were going to take him. Like, it was just that it's your pattern. You're going to take a – I mean, Jordan Howard's not really older. He's only, what, 20, 25 now, 26? No, he's 25. But he feels like an older running back. He's been around half a decade. So you just really like these older plotting guys. I don't know. Um, DJ Moore you took in the fourth round. So, like, I like DJ Moore. I think a lot of people are sleeping on him personally. I think he's, like, a good player. Uh, last year when he had a bunch of target share in the Carolina offense, he had a very good season. People don't know. People People are sleeping on him. He had like almost 1,200 yards. Uh, the touchdowns weren't there, which is a worry. Usually, again, I, I say touchdowns are pretty random, but you have to get the opportunity to score touchdowns. He only had like six red zone targets. Like, that's a very small amount. To give you an idea, like Odell Beckham had 21. And, yeah, that's not... That's six red zone targets is a very, very low number. Uh, I mean, I think the big, yeah. So, like, he only he's only scored six career touchdowns. They just don't really target him in the red zone at all. And I like Teddy Bridgewater. I think the defense in Carolina is terrible. So, like, I think they're going to be throwing. Uh, and he was the number 16 fantasy receiver uh, last year. But again, it, I kind of feel like, you know, we're paying for his ceiling, and this is his ceiling. Like, it's not going to get better. Like, last year was his breakout. He had 1,200 yards. He had four touchdowns. And, like, this is exactly where he would be um, if he was consistently that. But it's not going to get better. Like, I, I don't see a way he gets, like, 1,500 yards or, like, eight touchdowns. And... I mean, the very next pick, Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen has been a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. He was a top 10 wide receiver two years ago, three years ago. Last year when he was playing, he was a top five receiver. So, like, but we took DJ Moore, who had a good season last year. He had his breakout campaign. But we're paying, again, for, like, his ceiling is this. This is his ceiling. And I just don't feel like there's any real, like, upside there like it's a super safe consistent pick because he's healthy and he gets yards and you know in that offense behind McCaffrey's the guy but it's just kind of like like I don't know again I just feel like there are better players on the board like well, it, let's say you don't like Adam Thielen all right and why not AJ Brown AJ Brown was fantastic last year I mean AJ Brown had almost as many yards as DJ Moore and he led the Titans in red zone targets and in the last six weeks of the season he was a top three wide receiver like he's the number one receiving weapon in Tennessee like Tyler Lockett I I don't know I'm surprised I mean I guess I'm not surprised I kind DJ Moore is a kind of classic Brian pick but I mean that's what I mean you just kind of take guys who you kind of fall in love with, and they're pretty safe, but there's not really any upside to them. It's just kind of like, this is what they are, and I'm hoping they continue to stay what they are rather than taking the next step. Um, so, yeah, same kind of thing with DJ Chark in the next round. Like, I like DJ Chark. He was a breakout campaign uh, last year, but... You know, he had 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns, 118 targets. I think the Jaguars' defense is probably the worst defense in the NFL. I think they will be throwing quite a bit with Gardner Minshew. Uh, 
but I don't know. Again, this is like a borderline top 20 receiver. Yeah, on the board, you had DK Metcalf, who I really like. Um, I, is Chark going to get better? Like, I don't... I feel like last year was his breakout. So, again, like, we're paying for, like... We're paying for what he is right now, and there's no real possibility of it getting better. Like, I just don't believe that. I mean, you could disagree with me. I'm sure you probably will, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you. But... I don't see like a way that in these offenses that I'm I'm not really certain about. Like I don't know about Jay Gruden, West Coast offense. Like I haven't seen a couple years. He had Alex Smith, and that was like the second lowest scoring offense in the NFL. Uh, DJ Moore's got a college offensive coordinator and Joe Brady. I like Joe Brady when he was at LSU, but like, do they have the pieces on the offensive line to protect Teddy Bridgewater? Is Teddy Bridgewater going to attack downfield? How often are they going to use McCaffrey? I just, again, I feel like we're, we're paying for the peak and this is the peak and there's no possibility of it getting better. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So especially because there's so many good receivers in this round, like this is actually probably where I would have taken Robert Woods. Like last year you took Robert you took Robert Woods in like the third round. And I was just like, you're paying for the peak again. Well, this year he fell to round five. And last year the Rams weren't very good. But Robert Woods was pretty good. He just didn't get very many touchdowns. But I think now that they're changing up the offense a little, going to 12 personnel. So one running back, two tight ends, if you're wondering what that means. Um, I think they'll be better. And I think there's upside to Robert Woods, but I don't know. You don't really take the upside. You you take the peak, and this is like the guy. And I mean, your guys stay healthy. I'll get. I'll grant you that. But it's just never. It's, it's not terribly exciting. So next we took uh, Stefan Diggs. Uh, not really sure what to make of this. Like I like Diggs as a talent. I think he's a good player. Um, I mean, I hate to kind of harp on this same type of thing, but we're going to harp on the same type of thing. So first 10 weeks of the season, Diggs only, Diggs had like one huge monster week against Philadelphia. I think he had like three touchdowns in that game. But other than that, it was mostly just kind of like a whole hum, kind of like nine points a game year. And, you know, you can do that. But if we thought that, if people think Minnesota is run heavy, like, just wait till they get to Buffalo, all right? Like, Buffalo is super run-heavy, all right? They got rid of Frank Gore, who I, I do personally like, but he's not. He's just older, and he's not really, I don't know, he's not got the legs anymore. They drafted Zach Moss. They have Devin Singletary. You know, there's John Brown. Um, we also got, like, Cole Beasley. There's Knox now at tight end. I like most of those options, but the thing that's worrisome is, like, Josh Allen has been a 50% passer for the first two years, and I feel like they're going to start going to more of the Cam Newton running the ball offense with him, so I'm not really sure, like, if Diggs is going to get better. I I don't even think we're paying for the peak now. I think we're, pay <laughs> we're paying for the down, because, like... Buffalo's got a rough schedule against quarterbacks. Josh Allen's not terribly accurate. Buffalo is probably, other than Seattle, Buffalo is like one of the most run-heavy offenses in the NFL, even more so than Minnesota. So, like, last year, Diggs had like 1,100 yards, six touchdowns, and I, I don't see that in Buffalo's offense. I can't even remember myself the last time Buffalo's offense had a 1,000-yard receiver. I have no idea. I can't remember. It might be Sammy Watkins, and that was like three teams ago for that guy. So, again, I feel, I'm not even sure if we're paying for the peak here. I think we're paying for the decline. I don't, I don't love that. That is not something I'm about. So I don't know about that. I'm surprised I didn't take Will Fuller. That would have been a really big swing. Uh, but I probably would have been more okay with it. Or like Michael Gallup now in a new Mike McCarthy offense. I don't, you know, Marquise Brown went later to Rich, even though I think Rich should trade him. I don't know about Diggs, though, man. Like new offense, no offseason. Offense runs a lot. 
not very accurate passer. There's a lot of flags. There's a lot of red flags there. And that's your flex. I don't know. Okay, so here's the pick. It's funny. I actually t was talking specifically. Sarah specifically brought up this pick. Um, so you can kind of thank Sarah for it. Um, this pick is kind of like why I've harped on the last previous six rounds. And this pick is like very indicative of like the kind of things you do, Brian, and why I just don't really like the draft. So he took Sterling Shepard, okay? Sterling Shepard was, in a word, not very good last year. He was injured. He had concussion issues. I would know. I drafted him, and I was just like, nah, this ain't working. I eventually trade him. Uh, eventually, Patrick cut him. He is the supposed number one receiver in the Giants offense. I guess people are trying to tell me the Giants are going to be better this year. I Please explain to me how the offensive line got better. I don't I don't see it. But sure, okay. Um, I mean, he had the 17th most fantasy points the first 10 weeks of the season. Uh, but he's never really been healthy. Uh, yeah, and that was like two seasons ago. This pick is just a very Brian pick, which what I mean by that is just like, I don't see any upside at all with Shepard. Like, what are we talking here? Daniel Jones has a good season and Shepard gets what? 900 yards? Five touchdowns? Like, he's kind of like a guy on my bench who is just kind of like there and I don't really ever want to trade him, but he also doesn't, he's not good. He's good enough to be on a team. He's not good enough to cut, but he's not someone I ever want to start there's there's no upside here like there's the very next pick is daryl henderson jr i mean what if i don't even know like i know cam Akers might look like the guy in la but what if henderson jr is like the guy in la for the rams the starting running back like that's way more valuable than anything sterling shepherd's going to offer i don't see any way sterling shepherd becomes a number like i i suppose he's the number one wide out i've mentioned i think golden tape should be the number one wide out though but you know, it's throwing Shepard. I don't know. I just... These are the type of picks I really don't like because I'm just like, there's... Again, we're paying for, like, the peak, and I don't even really get it because there is no real peak with, like, Sterling Shepard. This is this is what he is. Like, he's probably going to get hurt. He's going to be okay. Um, even if he gets the ball, he's not going to get the ball much. And uh, you're kind of hoping he scores a touchdown and then everything's okay. I, I, don't, I don't want to play him. I, I don't want to start him. I don't want him on my team. I, it's just very, very unexciting. Funny enough, I found where Matt Breida went. Matt Breida went in the eighth round about six picks after this. He could have had Matt Breida. Would I have loved Matt Breida? No, but there's a lot of upside there. I don't really know what the upside is with Sterling Shepard. This is exactly the type of pick I don't want because there's just not... I don't... I don't see a way that he's ever starting on my team so maybe he's starting for your team but i don't i don't love that for you either i will admit the very the very next pick i like quite a bit deontay johnson was a sleeper of mine i think he will be better with roethlisberger people are sleeping on him they're still talking about juju juju's a slot receiver the steelers haven't offered him an extension because they like deontay johnson and if you as a steelers fan the Steelers are really good at developing wide receivers, all right? So, I mean, Antonio Brown, obviously, but even before him, you have, like, um, Mike Wallace, um, you had Santonio Holmes, you had Heinz Ward. Like, they're really, really good at developing wide receivers, and I think Deontay Johnson might be the next one. I know he didn't have as big a year last year, but he was still coming into his own, and they were figuring out, like who's going to start at quarterback between uh, Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. And Johnson might be the number one guy. There is a lot of upside with Deontay Johnson. He could have a breakout season because he hasn't had one yet. He was just a guy on a team with like backup quarterbacks kind of getting in the ball. I really like taking the upside, taking someone who could possibly start for me, who could be like a first or second round talent possibly if he has a breakout year and I think Deontay Johnson has that possibility I like this pick much better um so 
do I know the do I think he'll just get like 750 yards and like five or six touchdowns? Yeah, but there's the possibility that he is more, especially in an offense that will probably be high flying as long as Roethlisberger is healthy. So those are more the type of picks I I wish you'd take more. I wish you'd take more shots like that. And then, you know, ninth round, take a good linebacker, Jalen Smith. Uh, Tenth round, take a good linebacker, Corey Littleton. I like him. He was good for me a couple couple years ago. He's in Vegas now. A good coverage linebacker. Uh, We take Joshua Kelly, so I like that. Kelly's competing with Justin Jackson to be the backup to Austin Eckler for the Chargers. I think either of them, whoever wins, that's probably the goal line back. So, I mean, that's that's a good, hey, let me take a late-round flyer on a guy who might boom. I, I like that. Why don't we do more of that? I want more of that. <laughs> then 12th round, Josh Allen. So I mentioned before with Diggs, there's a lot of flags where I'm just like, nah, I don't really love Josh Allen. I mean, I like white Cam Newton. That's why I call him that. I I like him quite a bit, but it's kind of just like, you know, Mitch Trubisky got dragged to the playoffs by the uh, Bears defense. The Bills defense was very good last year. That being said, Josh Allen can really run, but I really need to see them, like, really make that 23rd passing offense with only 20 passing touchdowns. I need to see it. I need to see him be more accurate. I can't be doing, like, 20 passing touchdowns, man, and you'd be a starting quarterback. I need, like, 30, and I need less interceptions, and I need more rushes. But is there the possibility for that? There is, and I don't mind the draft position because, like, he was the number six quarterback in fantasy last year. People don't realize that. He was the number six quarterback in fantasy football last year, and he went in the 12th round. I took Cam Newton in the 11th. It was him or Josh Allen. I took Newton because I wanted Newton, and I believe in Belichick. I don't hate you for taking Allen in the 12th row. That's a steal. Allen's probably better than some of the quarterbacks you're drafted before him. So, good on you for waiting. I like that. Everybody did a good job with the quarterbacks this year. Then we took Poyer. I like Jordan Poyer. Safety for Buffalo. Next pick we have Benny Snell. I like Benny Snell. You know, backup for James Conner. Maybe there's something there. Conner gets hurt a lot. So, you know, not bad. And then we took Miles Garrett. So, yeah, I also noticed you picked up Bradley Chubb. I mean, I guess you must really like your defensive lineman. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Moving right along. Jack Doyle, tight end. Who is your tight end? Is that your tight end? Is Doyle your tight end? No, that can't be true. Really? There's Jack Doyle, our starting tight end. Wow. Jack Doyle is your starting tight end. You took Doyle. Oof, okay. Hmm. I mean, I think Doyle will be better this year. I mean, Ebron's gone, but they brought in Trey Burton. Oof. I don't know, man. It's a long time. He's like a fringe top 15 tight end. I would have liked it better if you took a tight end much sooner. It's a long time to wait. I did not realize that going into this. I should have put that in my notes. I'm like, hmm, dang, that is a long time. I'm not sure about that. All right, we took Chris Thompson in the 17th round. He catches the ball. He was good when he's good when he's healthy. I like Chris Thompson when he's healthy. Please stay healthy, Chris Thompson. You're great in John Gru and Jay Gruen's offense when you stay healthy. Stay healthy. So I don't. I I like the flyer. Took a kicker. I know we've since cut the kicker. We picked up Alshon Jeffrey. He's sitting on IR right now, so we're because we're holding Chubb uh, for a defensive lineman, but also holding Miles Garrett. I don't know. Overarching point. Again, this is kind of like a classic Brian draft. Like, I could almost close my eyes and kind of figure out who I thought you were going to take each round, and I might not have been right on every single pick. But most of the early picks, I probably would have been right on. Just because, like, again, you take guys at their peak, and there's not really any built-in upside. It's just kind of like, they're either going to be this, or it's downhill. It's one or the other. There's no there's no ascension. It's all peak, downhill. And I don't love that. I mean, you might disagree with me, but I do think you're going to make the playoffs, because you're a super solid team. You're actually one of the better waiver pickup guys. But I think that's almost out of necessity, 
kind of like when he picked up Philip Lindsay a couple years ago and Lindsay turned into something. I feel like you almost have to do that all the time because you're kind of just like, oh, this guy's on my team and he's decent, but he's not, I don't want to start him ever. And I feel like you always get like a bunch of those guys. So, I mean, overall, again, I don't hate the draft. I think he did better. I mean, at least he didn't make any mistakes like um, some of the other teams taking running backs and wide receivers. So that's a good thing. I'm happy for that. But I know you mentioned you wanted to be towards the higher end of the draft to get like an elite running back. And, you know, obviously you would probably prefer that. But even still, I mean, it's tough for me because like you're right by Patrick. And, like, Patrick's team has got depth. It's got really good players. There's a lot of upside. There's possibilities of more. And your team's just, like, super safe. Um, it's it's really strange. I feel like a lot of you guys, like, in the out-of-town, like, the out-of-town guys have, like, almost, like, this group think. Like, Ryan always takes his wide receivers. Robbie always takes, like, an early tight end. And I know he's going to hold up on receivers or hold up on running backs. And he's going to take, like, some second third round wide receiver but he's going to overdraft a quarterback like like i th i think mac has figured it out i think that ryan obviously has figured out how to draft robbie kind of does his own thing so don't worry about him and i think even justin's kind of like getting a better grip on the draft i'm just concerned about you really more so than any of the other guys i'm still i mean stefan's pretty young in the league so my expectations are lower for him but i think he's getting better i actually kind of like some of his picks but I don't know, Brian. We keep doing this kind of thing every single year. And, like, I think it'd do you some good just to talk to Justin and Mac and get their feedback. Because, like, I don't know. It's just, like, classic Brian picks. Like, if I was at the back end, I'd be like, I'm not going to worry about this guy because Brian's just going to take him. So I'm just going to go get somebody else. Like, you're of no. You and I are on completely different, like, lines of thinking of who we want to take. And maybe my line doesn't work for you. And that's completely okay. There are many different ways to win. But I really wish, especially in the later rounds, even more so than the beginning, we would just start taking some swings. Like, like last year I drafted David Montgomery and Miles Sanders, and I traded for Devin Singletary. And all those guys happened to hit. Uh, Montgomery wasn't as great as the other two, but... I didn't actually expect that, and I wanted at least just one of them to hit. And, you know, Miles Sanders is a first-round pick this year. Devin Singletary is a second-round pick this year, all right? Dave Montgomery is a second-round pick this year. I got those guys late, like late. I got Montgomery in the third round, I think Sanders in, like, the fifth, and then I traded for Singletary, and he was, like, a seventh-round pick. And, like, that's the kind of stuff I wish you were doing more of. And you don't have to do that with every pick, but just some of the picks because, like, I mean, man, like, is Stefan Diggs going to be a top five receiver in Buffalo? I don't think so. Is Chris Carson going to be a top 10 running back in Seattle? I don't think so. Is DJ Moore going to be a top 15 wide receiver? I don't think so. It's just kind of like we're paying for them at their peak, and, like, they might stay there, but I, this is as good as it's going to get, and I don't – I hate that. Like, that's never – that never gets me to the playoffs. That never gets me further in the playoffs. I mean, it gets me to the playoffs, but I, I never, I'm not really, really threatening for a championship. I may be like a, a dark horse candidate, I suppose, but I don't know. I think you should, you really ought to just think about like taking more swings. Cause like, I feel like the other guys have kind of figured it out and you're kind of just like the one straggler who's kind of like still kind of stuck in his ways. Just something to consider, uh, but I mean, I, I do like this team. I don't hate it. I would say B minus. You're probably like my number seven team, maybe. So you know, playoff team. Maybe you'll push for like five or something. But yeah, I don't know, Brian. I never really love your drafts. I know I I can be wrong. I mean, I was wrong when Sarah won a championship. I was wrong when Andre won a championship. But usually, like most of the teams I get right, and I feel like specifically with your team, I've been saying this for like every year now, and it's just kind of like, man, like I like how solid the team is, but like I just don't feel like there's a very big possibility this is going to be more. Um, yeah, because like sometimes you'll hit, not to make this any longer, but like it's just like your Mahomes pick. I liked that pick. 
Uh, I liked your Darren Waller pick. Sometimes you really hit on a guy, and I just wish you would do more of that. I wish you would take more risks like that rather than just be like waiting deep in the draft and just be like, I'm going to swing now. I'd be like, I feel like you should be swinging more rather than just be like, I'm going to take a single here and this guy will be good. Like, you probably could have won a championship with Mahomes because you took him in the 12th round and he had 50 touchdowns that year, but the rest of your team was just okay. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't expect you to, like, hit on every pick, but... And sometimes you really are good when you really go up and you just take a hack and you just hit a home run. But I really wish sometimes you would fortify your team to be able to have, to take more of those hacks. Um, and sometimes it might implode in your face. But I think you're good enough at waivers that you'd figure it out, even if t guys failed you. Um, and I'd rather guys fail you than just be doing like this, which is just kind of like plodding along, doing pretty well, but not really a, a championship team. I don't know. I feel like I do this every year with you, so. Anyway, I know you're not gonna like this. You're probably gonna send me something and say, it's just like, you're wrong about this, this, and this. I, I already understand. You're gonna send me something about Jordan Howard, I'm sure. I'm, <sighs> I, I knew going into the draft you are gonna take Jordan Howard. Like, it was just like, it was easy for me to see that. I saw that a mile away, so. And I think that's the worrisome thing. Is like when, I don't know if other people notice it, but if other people do too, like, you got to change something up. So, there you go. This is long. I'm sorry.